welcome everyone to another edition of In the Divine, where we're sharing all things crypto together with our grand hack. How you doing? Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, been out doing the hustle thing, have many things in the fire. Um, hopefully all of you are well. I'm here today because it was a big um, thing in crypto. Um, and that was the Fit 21 bill. Uh, I'm trying to work with a couple of the, the Congress people, I'm trying to get a little bit more boots on the ground with trying to see if I can do a little bit where I can influence and try to get people, uh, representatives to, to understand and have a little bit more knowledge of crypto. Hopefully you've been taking care of your bag, doing your due diligence. Have you found another project? Um, I'm going to be doing some different things on the channel coming up. Look uh, for some of uh, that content. Uh, some of the events that's going to be coming that I'm going to go to. Um, keep uh, tapped in so you can uh, see if some of the stuff, stuff, the places I'm going, the information you can use. I encourage, get some information, insight, and maybe help you find your next bag. All right? Not financial advice, but let's get into it. So, yesterday they voted the FIT bill, FIT 21. You know, they love their names on the bill. But I wanted to come to you because the members of Congress are very funny. And I don't know how they represent us a lot of times, California. but I think that this is something you understand. When we get this framework, it's very important because this framework is going to be what crypto is built on. So one of the biggest things is um, the Ethereum... EFT, because what seems to be going on is um, they're now giving categories to where the CTFT is going to be regulating these commodities and the SEC is going to be regulating the securities. And all digital assets are going to be in one or those two camps. And if the ones that want to be commodities, uh, the Ethereum, the, most of the um, blockchain space wants to be in the commodities situation, all right? There's some that's going to fall strictly in the SEC, and those going to be different. It's going to be a little bit more on onerous, um, I think, as far as the compliance issues uh, that's going to be um, needed to undergo. But um, if you find your stuff uh, into the commodities, you need to do your due diligence to see how that's going to affect um, uh, your, um, your bag and see if, if it's going to uh, change anything, which it probably will, won't. Uh, because most of the uh, most of the blockchain, most of the projects uh, are seeking uh, to be commodities uh, like Bitcoin and like uh, Ethereum. Um, so they just have to prove a couple of of the metrics of being uh, significantly decentralized and blah blah blah, and you know how we test stuff. So I needed you to. Uh, kind of take a, a look at some of the stuff because the Biden administration was going against it, but now you can this see... Year, I know my fact. This bill would deregulate a substantial portion of the crypto industry, taking them out of the purview of the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, and allowing them to operate either under a lighter touch regulatory regime under the Commodity Futures Trading Commission or in what I have called a regulatory no man's land, 
with no primary regulator and virtually no regulations. For crypto, that would remain under the SEC's purview. This bill still provides major exemptions from critical securities laws. And if this wasn't bad enough, this bill is not just about crypto. Language was added to the bill after it was marked up by the committees of jurisdiction that would allow even some traditional securities to also exist in this regulatory no, no man's land. Specifically, I'm referring to Title II of the bill that defines the term investment contract asset. Assets that fall under this definition are explicitly deemed not to be securities and therefore not under the SEC's purview. But the bill doesn't provide an alternative legal framework for these assets. This represents an extreme MAGA libertarian approach where companies can operate without regulatory scrutiny and consumers and investors are on their own in detecting and avoiding fraudulent schemes. While Republican defenders of this bill have argued that this definition of investment contract asset is limited to digital assets under the bill, this is disputed by legal experts and SEC Chair Gary Jensen himself, who confirmed in a recent statement regarding this bill that it would have a broader impact on traditional securities. Interestingly, I don't hear any arguments from the Republicans at the Rules Committee hearing disputing that this. Do you really want so, to make your holiday special? So basically, with this, um, the gentleman reserves, the gentle lady from California. Well, what right she, she's uh, saying is um, a lot of um, a lot of political fluff in there. Uh, I want to put what she uh, put in there um, because uh, this is uh, some of the things that the challenges uh, of doing things in political things that um, you know I think goes over most of our our heads as citizens, because we see things as more of a practical, well, we, why can't you do this? But solutions seem to be within reach. But when you're dealing with a political process, it's not about solutions. It's about who has the solutions and what kind of solutions you want to implement. At this point, um, it's clearly a Republican and Democrat thing. Republican seems to be in more in favor of allowing digital assets to exist, um, while the Democrats seem to want to find a way to constrain um, with more regulations. Um, I don't know if it's a more of about a tax thing, uh, but they seem to be a, a little bit more, and it's never about commute consumer protections. They, they be talking about consumer. This is about how money is going to be coming in through the coffers or who's going to be able to pay them money to 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 buy and curry favor. This is never about the people. Uh, I don't want I don't want you to confuse that because that's not what Congress is about. You may get a couple of things of legislation that may dribble down that may affect us, but that's not what they're about. Um, I don't mean to seem, seem cynical or anything, but that's that's the truth because that's that's how they vote. But um, there is a couple of things in this bill. If you do want to read this bill, you can find this bill, and uh, you can go ahead and peruse it like uh, I did. Get ready uh, to get some tea, some coffee, because you will need a nap or two. But it is uh, helpful. Uh, but the bill at its core, like I said, is a framework where at least people are starting to understand uh, uh, crypto in the United States needs some kind of framework. So the companies could go to the CFTC and say, look, this is what we're doing. 
where need to be fit in this in this uh, in this model and let help us go forward. So now the people who want to purchase in the United States have a clear roadmap and there's some guidelines along attached to it. That makes it a lot more where the United States market will start to come in and, and, and start to fill in the gaps of the crypto market. And then, then the institutions that wants to be a part of it, they'll feel more comfortable because they understand that the, the, the uh, roadmap is being set to where they see a, a, a clear path. Understand this. They see a clear path because they understand that now that crypto is something that now can be regulated, they control the regulators. They they can say, look, we need it to be this. You know, the institutions, they will have the ability to talk to the, the makers of these bills and try to form and get the regulations and the, the, uh, the wording on their side. Like I said, it's never about community co consumer protection. Not not on a high side. Not in 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 the in the immediate. It's going to be residual. But I like some of the things that's going on. Another big thing that I I like that's going on. I didn't um, uh, say anything about this, but. Um, <sighs> I think this is going to be a, another big step in having uh, the markets uh, come in uh, as far as the regular people, because one of the biggest things um, in um, digital assets that makes it very scary is if you lose your seed phrase and all this other stuff, it's lost forever. There's, there's millions of dollars of Bitcoin that can never be recovered because seed phrase loss. Millions of dollars in crypto is gone because the seed phrase is lost. And to the ones to us in crypto who are who are made to dive into it, we've taken that risk and we've understood that and that possibility and we accept it but most people will not that's that's a non-starter i can go and have this thing for 10 years and all of a sudden because i got into an accident or this happened to me or this thing happened to me some unforeseen you lost everything that's a very hard way to live some to people for people who are not um innately digital so Ripple, XRP, and a couple of other places are teaming up uh, with Hedera, Algorand, and they are really uh, moving forward with this uh, DREC alliance. And it's uh, digital recovery, okay? Finding a way for people to be able to recover uh, their seed phrase or uh, get uh, um, a opportunity to recover a, a lost seat phrase or wallet um, through, of course, uh, a zero knowledge type proof uh, way of proving that this wallet is yours. Um, of course, zero knowledge proof is a way of proving who you are without revealing your identity. Uh, one of the one of the uh, strongest ways uh, as far as security uh, um, in the industries is the, the ZK rollups and the zero knowledge proof. So I think this is a very um, under under um, appreciated, uh, very low key. Thing that I think is going to be very uh, big for the digital market. Uh, but I see um, if you're in the market to do this, um, be very, very careful. 
um, because with the regulations and things that's coming forth, there may be uh, some huge swings. I, I tell people that get into the uh, digital and try to get in blockchain and they, you know, they, you know, people want to make money. That, that's all they see. And people chase the meme coins. And I, I don't, I don't want to say I don't like meme coins, but meme coins are, are Ponzi schemes. And people can try to question it or not, but there is no use. There is no product. There's nothing but the speculation. So that is what a Ponzi scheme is. The first dollar in and the first investors are, are the ones who benefit Okay, they have an insane advantage because whoever comes after that, they only push up the price. So the people who come in afterwards, the price is always already higher. So you need more people to come in after you to push the price up so you can get the value. But the key to that is the people who came in before, when, when the price goes to a point, they keep selling their stuff because they are so much in the, the 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 black it's 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 um uh, it's advantageous for them and by the time this thing gets and does anything it's just a big ponzi and it makes it harder and harder and harder and you know some people win like i said that some people win but it's usually the people who are invested in the beginning and the people who come in at the end are going to be holding um, holding bags, or bags of nothing. And then they'll run to another crypto, another meme coin, and another meme coin, and explode, and they have five millionaires, and everybody will chase those millionaires. But it has to be a better way. But if that's how people come and going to be turned on to digital assets is because of the gambling, heh, who am I to say? No. But like I said, do your own due diligence. Hopefully you find yourself in the advantageous position. Like I say all the time, may your tomorrows be better than your today. And I'm out.